Hello, everybody. So, welcome you to our first uh, talk. Uh, we're going to talk about migration from CentOS to Ubuntu. And um, we have Sena Gungor uh, from Microsoft. Let's please welcome her. Working. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, uh, just a quick note uh, before starting. This is my first ever uh, conference speak, uh, speech and uh, my first PG Conf view as well. So, I'm going to try to hide my excitement, but uh, yeah, today um, I'm going to talk about how we migrated from uh, CentOS to Ubuntu for our Asia Cosmos DB4 PostgreSQL clusters. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. I guess it's been four years now. And I've been working with the uh, Cosmos DB team. Uh, yeah, uh, to start with, before I go into the details of the migration process, I want to uh, give a little info about uh, what is Azure Cosmos DB for PostgreSQL. So it is a fully managed database uh, which uh, you, the customers don't need to deal with backups, uh, updates, or any background process. And we do them for uh, we do those things for them. Um, it is also extended with Citus. I'll uh, give more information about Citus in the next slide. But uh, you can distribute your tables uh, across multiple nodes. And uh, it allows you to combine their memory usage, uh, memory, CPU, and other resources. Um, also, it is, uh, as per the Citus feature, it is horizontal scalable. So as your needs grow in the time, uh, you can uh, just add another node and grow uh, as much as you like. Uh, so, as I mentioned, Citus is an open source uh, extension for PostgreSQL that transforms the PostgreSQL into a distributed database. Uh, you can parallelize your queries and uh, manage lar large complex workloads uh, as uh, your, if your workload grows. Uh, so, what this has to do with uh, our migration process is that uh, it means that we are going to have to deal with multiple nodes when mi migrating from uh, CentOS to Ubuntu. Any migration will affect uh, all of these nodes, and we need to keep them in sync. Uh, so why we migrated? Because long story short, uh, CentOS 7 reached its end of life, uh, which means no more security patches, no more uh, security updates. And this was uh, a complete risk for our customers. So we had to choose a supported operating system for that. And that's where Ubuntu comes into picture. Why Ubuntu? Uh, because of its actually long-term support. And uh, Ubuntu has a plan for its packages for several years in the future. And uh, we need to have that um, uh, security, I guess, uh, for our customers and to keep them their clusters healthy. And also, the packages we rely on for the Azure Cosmos DB for PostgreSQL were uh, frequently supported and updated for the Ubuntu clusters. And also, on top of these uh, reasons, uh, we did also uh, uh, some benchmark tests using HammerDB, and we uh, saw an improvement in their performance, in our cluster's performance. So this was a, also a plus one for us. Uh, to start with, our migration plan was quite simple. Uh, we were going to create standbys with Ubuntu and then do failover. And uh, we were hoping that things would uh, work instantly. But uh, we faced the error as soon as we started querying our database, that database has a collision version mismatch. So what is this collision? Uh, it actually refers to a set of rules that determine how text is compared and sorted uh, in the database. So every database has a different collision settings. And 
uh, if there is a mismatch with the database and the operating systems uh, versions, then we see this error. Um, why this happened? It's actually because we uh, came from uh, CentOS clusters to Ubuntu and uh, the glibc version actually changed. So uh, GNU C library is um, a critical component for any Linux-based system and uh, which works with memory allocation, input-output operations, and the most important part for us, string processing. Uh, so, uh, glibc is actually responsible of the, all these collation rules that uh, Ubuntu uh, and our PostgreSQL has, and uh, when this version changes, uh, we will have to um, work on these changes and make sure that our database still works fine. So, I would like to give some examples of how these sorting and collation changes will affect us. Because of this uh, glibc version change, uh, the new version, the, our new Ubuntu clusters are not really consistent with the old version. So, um, for example, special characters. Um, previously, before, uh, before uh, migrating with the old CentOS, old glibc version, the CentOS 7, we were uh, the left part was the correct way of sorting the uh, special characters, dash and underscore and then period, but uh, this completely changed after the migration and uh, period, period comes uh, with, uh, as prioritized and afterwards it will be a dash and underscore. So if we have any uh, index on uh, that has a text column and they if they have any of these things we will have an issue with our uh, with querying our database uh, so with handle and accents um, uh, previously resume and the uh, e with the accent I, I, i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing it right but uh, was uh, they were grouped together because they had the same character, even though if uh, even if they have an accent or not. But after the migration, it's uh, the accented characters were grouped together, and first the non-accented characters are going to be sorted. So this will also uh, affect our database. And another change uh, with the numbers, uh, file one, file 10, and then file two. I, I'm sure all of us have seen this uh, happening uh, because they were uh, treated as characters in, instead of numbers. So after the glibc version change, uh, now two will come before the 10 because it will uh, treat them as numbers uh, after now. So in order to uh, not get affected by these changes, we need to rebuild our indexes, and um, which will uh, completely rebuild our indexes to, according to the new collation version. This will ensure that our text comparisons and sorting mechanisms work correctly, and uh, it's not just about uh, solving an error that we saw previously, but it's, it's also about ensuring the data integrity and also query accuracy. So uh, our plan is uh, change adult. We need to have a, a, another step for after the failover, and we added re-indexing for that step, okay, that didn't work. Um, so how are we gonna decide which index are affected? Uh, as I mentioned, since the sorting and uh, text comparison, comparison uh, collation rules are changed, we, we need to focus on the text columns, like text, var, char, char, and side text. These columns rely on these uh, collation rules to sort and compare the data, so we need to make sure that uh, our indexes on these columns work correctly. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, to, to detect these changes, uh, PostgreSQL provides us a query that we can use and uh, decide on which indexes are uh, changed. Um, so with this query, we are gonna see the 
columns with the text, uh, columns with text, and uh, we'll uh, save them for later use of reindexing operation. Uh, so we need to uh, prepare for this reindex because it's uh, if the data is not being reached in a recent time, we're going to have to go to the disk and do some perform a lot of slow reads uh, to prepare for this reindex operation, and this will significantly slow down our process. So in order to not have this issue, we are going to use PGP Worm. Um, it will preload our tables and uh, tables into the memory, and when we try to access uh, any of these tables for indexing, uh, it will save us from a lot of performance issues. Uh, before starting querying, we are going to load our data into memory, and then uh, we won't have to fetch this for fetch data from the disk every now and then. And uh, we'll also ensure smooth mig post-migration process uh, for our customers. So how we're gonna use the PG Perform? We're just gonna create extension and then uh, whatever the uh, uh, indexes are existing in table, uh, we're gonna use that uh, uh, table name with the PG Perform uh, command. So we have another step here, uh, PG, preparing with PG Perform. <coughs> so for a quick re recap, why did we migrate? Because uh, CentOS was coming to end of life and uh, our initial plan was to create standbys and then do failover, but that required, uh, it turns out that we need to re-index our database. And then uh, to fa faster that process, uh, we decided to use PG Perform as well. Uh, now we are gonna migrate, but uh, how we are gonna make sure that nothing goes wrong and uh, our migration process runs smoothly, we need to uh, make sure that uh, we don't have any issues on the real world scenario because uh, it is a one time oper operation and uh, so we have to make sure that we don't see any surprises. As I said, it is a one shot, one opportunity. <laughs> so I, uh, I put, uh, I tried to set my all slides in, <laughs> around this uh, Eminem uh, lyrics. So. Uh, to make sure that we don't have any issues, we came up with a validator tool. Uh, this tool was gonna uh, make sure that we don't see any surprises and we can do dry runs for the uh, customers' clusters. So what we're gonna do with the validator tool, we're gonna fork the cluster with uh, point-in-time recovery and uh, which will allow us to uh, have a real-world scenario ready for us, and the environment will be completely the same as the customers. Uh, then we're gonna prepare the standbys. Uh, in this step, we'll be able to change any required configuration, which I'm gonna be talking about in the following slides. And afterwards, we're gonna do re-index. We'll actually apply the initial plan exactly. Uh, so with the validation, we'll be able to estimate the downtime because reindexing operation is gonna require us to have a uh, downtime and, because, and we're gonna have to lock the database for input output operations. So while communicating with customers, we need to have an estimate of how long is this uh, gonna last. So uh, with the validator tool, we'll be able to uh, measure that. Uh, we'll also be able to test the migration process because, as I mentioned, this will, um, we don't know if we're gonna face any issues with the extensions or memory or anything. And uh, with the validators, we'll, we were able to identify any edge cases, if any. We also did some experimentation with the performances. So 
uh, as I mentioned, we were able to configure any uh, configure our standbys, and we did a lot of tests to make sure that we have the best scenario for uh, memory consumption or uh, extension management. And also, we enabled all the uh, error reporting and logging mechanisms we could have uh, to make sure that we have the best results. So we had about 900 clusters to migrate, and we measured the downtime with the validators. Uh, just to make sure that we have solid results, we uh, run a minimum of five times for each of the clusters. And uh, once we had a stable results, consistent results, uh, we were able to communicate them with the customer. About 400 of them resulted under five minutes, so which means that uh, it was under our SLA commitment, so we just uh, made sure that it lasts under the five minute uh, limits and uh, migrated them without the customer knowing about it. Uh, but for the rest of them, even if it takes like six minutes, we had to uh, communicate the customers and make sure that uh, they have confirmed the uh, maintenance window and we communicate them uh, about the downtime. So I'd like to go on with the challenges. Now, of course, out of memory, uh, I'm sure it's uh, one of the most common areas that all of the de developers uh, see. Uh, when we are dealing with the large tables and large indexes, uh, the amount of memory needed for this operation can become really uh, high, and PostgreSQL needs to buffer the data into memory, and uh, for the re-index operation, uh, it's actually really costly operation, so if we run out of memory at any point, our re-index is gonna crash instantly. What we did to overcome these challenges, uh, we increased uh, the compute power adding, by adding more vCores. Uh, by adding more vCores, we were able to parallelize our processes, re-index operations, and um, it allowed us to uh, faster the operations and uh, minimize uh, the downtime required from customer. Uh, some of the nodes required much more uh, vCores than we expected, but uh, we upgraded them in the back end, but, and uh, also uh, I'd like to point that we also uh, reverted them to the original vCores after the migration is completed. But uh, it wasn't enough for some of the clusters. Uh, so this is... Um, example that a cluster A has a 49 gigabytes of total index size and uh, original v course was four, so we were using uh, N minus one thread counts for uh, N being the v core count. Um, we had three threads for running for this cluster and uh, we didn't get any results with the uh, original v course, but once we increased it to 32 uh, v course, we were able to get results under our SLA commitment even. And performance was quite a uh, nice downtime for us. Another one, 189 gigabytes. It was also out of memory, but it had two v cores originally, and uh, we had to increase it to 64, which is a little costly. But uh, we were able to uh, get a result at least, and uh, it was 60, 16 minutes. Another one having a real large index as well. Uh, we also had to increase that to 64. And as I mentioned, after we, the re-index operation was completed, we reversed them to original record counts. And uh, not, uh, we didn't build it, those changes uh, for the customer. Uh, another approach we used is increasing the VM overcommit ratio. You can see that we are trying uh, a lot of things uh, and uh, completely experimenting with the memory issues. Um, what uh, VM overcommit ratio does is it uh, controls how much memory is committed, for, um, system is willing to overcommit for the uh, process. By default, it allocates more memory than it's 
physically available, but once we change it to 100, uh, it allowed the system to overcome with all the memory it has. Uh, but why we did this is because uh, we it became better at handling those memory spikes, even though it uh, was not really um, the com I mean, completely correct way to uh, work with the other memory issue, but it gave PostgreSQL extra breathing memory, uh, and uh, it allowed system to be more aggressive with the memory allocation. What it did for us, it temporarily avoided the out-of-memory errors during the, uh, these heavy operations like re-indexing large indexes. Uh, it was actually a short-term performance gain for us because uh, it's it's, it could actually cause performance issues, but uh, like I said, we were experimenting and uh, we, we were trying to use all these features, all these configuration changes, uh, co uh, like increasing some of them and decreasing some of them together. Uh, another one we used was maintenance work memory. So uh, it specifies the amount of memory allocated for maintenance operations, like vacuuming or re-indexing. Um, we initially had a high value set for this maintenance work memory. But uh, once we started to re-index, and there were a lot of threads running uh, parallel in parallel, uh, it was overwhelming the system and uh, causing the, uh, the nodes to have out-of-memory issues. Um, we were actually uh, trying to find a really neat balance between speed and stability. So we were, uh, some of the clusters, we were looking for just a downtime, just an answer, and uh, we had to make sure it completes the re-index in operation, even though it takes long. So our migration plan had another step added. Uh, once we prepare our tables with the PGP worm, we have to optimize the memory and then do re-indexing. I don't know why it's so another uh, challenge we had was the, with the post, post JS extension. Uh, it's, uh, this extension is used for adding geospatial features to existing PostgreSQL structure. Uh, it has support for storing, indexing, querying geospatial data. Um, in our case, PostJS was essential because some of the, our customers' uh, data were lying on their uh, support on PostJS, and uh, they will not be able to uh, work with this data without the PostJS changes. Even though we didn't update the PostgreSQL versions with the migration, we had to upgrade the PostJS version because uh, it relies on some of the system libraries like Geos, GDL, AL, and Proj. Uh, but why this was important? Because uh, glibc version change was also impacting this uh, PostJS extension. Uh, since glibc version change was affecting how PostJS handles text and uh, sorting uh, data, it will also have issues with the. It means that it is going to have issues with the uh, spatial types like geometry and geography. So we have another step, uh, upgrading PostgreSQL at the end of the uh, our migration plan. Uh, another challenge we had was uh, range partition. Uh, so some of the ta uh, some of our clusters had uh, tables that were range partitioned, and which means data was split into uh, multiple partitions based on certain ranges. For example, in this case, uh, addresses table was partitioned by the city names, and uh, the city names that start with A until A E uh, was in the first partition, and then F K L P and R Z comes. Uh, for example, for a uh, city called Lots, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but um, it was previously before the glibc version change. It was uh, 
in the third partition with the LMP uh, section, but after the glibc version change, since, uh, like we said, the extended characters are uh, grouped together now and separated from their actual characters, it's gonna uh, move to the uh, last partition, actually. And uh, we need to make sure that our re-indexed tables and uh, migrated clusters will also show this effect and uh, our, the queries that require this change. Uh, will still work for our case. So we need to make sure that uh, we need to decide if any of the clusters have range partitioning and if yes, if uh, we need to see if they're uh, partitioned by a text column. And if so, uh, we had to uh, make sure that they didn't have any database collation version mismatch uh, error uh, after the migration. So now we have another step uh, added to our migration plan. Uh, as you see, it was anything but smooth. I mean, uh, smooth sailing was the title uh, for my talk here, but uh, we had to account for memory optimization, especially as we ran into a, a lot of out of memory issues. Uh, even though we didn't change any PostgreSQL version, we had to deal with extension management due to PostGIS changes. And also, uh, range partition was also another important topic for us. We need to be extra careful with the uh, partition data, and uh, we had to ensure that no rows of data was moved to due to these local changes. Uh, what we did is uh, we migrated over 900 clusters. Uh, we have to have a lot of these customer discussions because uh, since our process included downtime, uh, we had to communicate to customers about these downtime and inform them beforehand. And we decided on the maintenance windows uh, for our uh, for the clusters, and also. Uh, as a team uh, working on this uh, migration process, we were based in Turkey, Istanbul, and uh, but have, we have a lot of cl uh, customers around the world. So, uh, which meant that even though we had validators in hand and made sure uh, we ran minimum of five times, maybe ten times uh, these validators, we couldn't uh, keep ourselves from watching over the migrations, so which meant uh, night shifts for us. And also I'd like to thank my uh, teammates, which uh, they couldn't be here, but uh, welcome. We worked together uh, in this migration uh, process. Um, yes, actually that's the end of my <laughs> talk. So if you have any questions, uh, I can uh, answer them. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Sina. So there is a question here first. OK. Hi. Thank you for Hi. your talk. And um, I, I wanted to ask you, you skipped on logical replication. So is it because of logical replication limitations or bugs, or because you couldn't expect customers to freeze schema? Uh, our actually uh, infrastructure didn't allow us to use logical replication uh, for uh, the migration process. Uh, actually, we could have been able to re-index the clusters without uh, seeing any downtime, but uh, Due to some internal changes, we were unable to prepare the infrastructure for logical replication, as you mentioned. Um, yes, I, I can. Yes, that's correct. Hi, thank you. Hi. Uh, I had two questions, really. One was, were there any extra complications with the PostGIS data migration or just re-indexing? Mm -hmm. And the second question is, how did you parallelize your re-indexing? Mm -hmm. uh, because we've got six terabytes of re-index we have to do. Mm -hmm. how, do how did you break that down and parallelize it? Mm -hmm. um, for the first question, uh, with the PostJS, we did actually see some other uh, issues, uh, like type geometry doesn't exist, uh, like uh, 
quite regular uh, PostJS issues, I guess, uh, because we had to upgrade the PostJS version. We made sure that search paths or uh, any internal structure were running completely correctly, and uh, we had to deal with some internal uh, PostJS issues as well. Um, for the other question, how did we parallelize? Uh, actually, multiple, uh, as I mentioned, uh, for a cluster having like four nodes, four week cores, uh, we had uh, three threads running concurrently, and they were each uh, handling a separate index uh, because we prepared the, uh, using the query that I've mentioned, we prepared the indexes that need to be rebuilt. And uh, once we decided on those, we run the re-index operation concurrently, actually. Okay, so you just ran them all in separate yes. sessions? Yes, Right, mm -hmm. okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. There's another one here. Yeah. Hello, uh, I was wondering, um, do you use uh, synchronous replication or async when you uh, set I it up? I couldn't hear, actually, sorry. Um, do you use synchronous replication for um, clusters? Yes, actually, but uh, we didn't in a, uh, use them in this migration process uh, because uh, not all the clusters had replication enabled. And they didn't, or not all of them had replica, replicas. So the ones that had replica, replica uh, we were able to migrate them a lot easier, but uh, for the ones that didn't have, um, we didn't enable them extra in this case. So, yes. Okay, w one more question. Which uh, Postgre version uh, did you migrate? Um, actually, all of them until 15, uh, because at that time, they uh, we had at most PG-15 clusters in the database, and starting from uh, PG-11, we migrated all of these versions without uh, differing with the versions. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question quick. Hello, thank Sorry. you for presentations. Uh, actually, I want to ask two things. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, uh, did you use PG repack for reindexes? If not, why? Uh, the other one is, uh, did you uh, automate some process. I mean, did you automate uh, some steps before starting migrations? Um, actually, the steps that I mentioned were uh, quite automated with the uh, validator tool, but, uh, oh, I started from the last question. Um, and also, the migration process was also completely automated. I mean, uh, we were just setting the uh, scheduling the time that it needs to migrate, uh, communicating with the customer. And uh, after all, we didn't have to do any ma manual intervention for that. Um, for the first question, sorry, I forget. The, uh, why actually, did you use PG repack or not? Um, no, we didn't use, uh, actually. Um, I'm, I don't really recall how it was used, so uh, I can find you after the uh, talk and we can discuss uh, further on that. Uh, maybe okay. I can try to answer separately. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There is another question here. We have time for all the questions, so don't worry if I don't get to that place yet or he doesn't get to. Hello. Uh, I was wondering how, uh, what exactly did you do to solve the problems or challenges you had with the oh, range sorry. partitioning not working? I'm sorry, I was trying to find you in the crowd, sorry. Uh, could you repeat that, please? Yeah. Uh, what uh, what um, solution did you use uh, for solving the partition, that uh, range partition, and that doesn't work? Um, for that case, actually, that was another thing that we should be extra careful about. I mean, if, since we were not uh, really sure how the uh, columns were going to react or how the uh, GLPC changes were uh, going to be affected. Uh, we just made sure that uh, the range partition worked, and uh, we were extra careful, actually. Uh, 
we just run uh, like select queries on the partition tables and make sure that we didn't have any uh, collation mismatch and the queries were uh, working correctly. Uh, yes, I guess. There's another question on the back. Hi. Um, did you face any, uh, apart from having to re-index everything, did you face any other issues from the changed sort order of the glibc? Um, uh, not actually. I mean, uh, the out of memory and the uh, glibc changes uh, in particular, we had issues with um, PostJS version, and uh, they were, uh, with the other extensions, we didn't face any other issues. We just made sure that they were still working, but um, yeah, I, not, I don't think we have. Okay, thanks. Ah, hi, thank you for oh, the hi. presentation. I have questions around, you mentioned you had around 900 clusters. My question is more on monitoring. How did, which metrics did you think were helping you validate that you think things are working correctly? And how did you, like, I'm trying to understand the thought process behind the monitoring of the migration. Mm, I, I couldn't really hear, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, the question is around the monitoring of the oh, fleet. Monitoring, yes. So what metrics did you choose to validate that the migration is working effectively? Mm -hmm. And what pointed you to the directions that other things are failing from the data point of view? Mm -hmm. uh, for each re-index operation, we've enabled logging beforehand, and uh, our validators uh, actually uh, measured all the index sizes beforehand and uh, logged them uh, for uh, any future need we have. Uh, other than that, we were uh, actually watching, monitoring the all the, uh, since we had the validator, validators, we were able to monitor all of the CPU memory changes uh, and record them uh, for use cases. And uh, in the real ones, real ones, uh, we were also monitoring all the, um, all of their usage in memory disk uh, as well, and also had logging mechanisms uh, enabled for them. Uh, actually, there are uh, internal tools that we've developed beforehand, uh, already existing ones, and we use them for, the, for this case as well. Hmm. Well, first of all, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, did you consider using the ICU library to address uh, the collation of databases? And if not, is there a good reason not to do so? Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't hear the... Uh, the, um, the I think of the ICU uh -huh. library uh, to get rid of the problems with uh, glibc. Uh, I'm not actually aware of this library, but I'll look it up and uh, make sure that we have a reason for that <laughs> and uh, talk it to you maybe after this. Okay. Does that work? Okay. Uh, you should look at this uh, yes, ICU please. library. Yes, please. please. <laughs> Thank you. We have another question here. Are there other questions after that? Just to, okay, there. Okay, uh, hi everyone. Thank you for the talk again. So I have like two questions. It seems that most of your problems were coming from the glibc changes and the collation changes. Are there any other problems like that that you encounter while migrating from one OS or the other? And as well, I am interested by uh, knowing if you did see any changes like in performance numbers or anything memory conception while migrating exactly the same workload from one OS to the other? Um, we didn't actually see any other issues, uh, uh, but we saw improve improvements in the performance of our uh, clusters. We saw a decrease in the memory usage overall, uh, comparing the before and after of the migration process. So Ubuntu was uh, a lot uh, easier to man manage and also uh, the performance was also improved during this. So it was a win-win 
uh, for us, actually. Um, yeah, yes, did I answer? OK, thanks. Thank you for your uh, presentation. Oh, it's working. Um, you had the need to uh, re-index. If you would not have re-indexed, did you get an error, or did the index, was it not used? Um, if we didn't, uh, if I understand correctly, if once we didn't re-index, did we see any errors? Yeah, or was the index not used, so you did not get an error? Um, um, we knew, actually beforehand, we knew that we would come across uh, uh, issues with the re-indexing, because if they had any index on the text columns, we had to re uh, apply re-index on them. So uh, if there wasn't any indexes using those columns, then we were good and uh, didn't have to do any uh, re-index operation on those. But uh, if we had uh, indexes on text columns, we had to re-index. So that's how it was decided. I'm not sure if I understand correctly your question. Okay. My, my question was, um, uh, if you would have not done the re-indexing, on that text columns, mm -hmm. what would have happened? Um, ah, yes, OK. Uh, the uh, queries would not be looking for the correct place, and uh, for the, uh, the indexes were directing us to the correct place of the data. And if we didn't re-index, it would be looking for, some, uh, for those indexes in some other place. And uh, we would be we wouldn't be able to access those indexes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, one more question: uh, Did you migrate uh, one to one like the same Postgres version, minor and major, and also kernel version and file system, or was it different? How did you measure kernel performance uh, if it's different? Because from time to time, I'm hitting some kernel bugs, and I just try to understand how would you. Mm -hmm. uh, our PostgreSQL versions are actually uh, kind of a um, pinpoint for us. I mean, uh, the customers are uh, actually deciding on which version they would like to use. So uh, once you try to create an Azure Cosmos DB for PostgreSQL cluster, you can pick the uh, latest uh, supported versions, uh, one of them. You can pick one of them. And so we didn't have the chance to in uh, upgrade their clusters instantly. So we had to keep the same uh, PostgreSQL version for after the migration. Uh, uh, yes. I, I, um, I'm. I'm, I'm not sure about the answer now, actually. I'll also find <laughs> you and uh, try to understand your question. Yes. Yeah, um, there's another question there, and then we, we close after that question. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your talk. Uh, did you consider for uh, some of the clusters even uh, to use a uh, dump and restore to avoid all uh, the burden of uh, the ICU collection and uh, etc. Did you consider to use a uh, dump and restore, PG dump and PG restore, basically? Mm. I, I, I couldn't understand the question. Uh, Oh, OK. Um, not actually. Uh, we didn't consider that uh, because we were, we had the failovers. Uh, we found the failovers, I guess, more easier. Um, uh, yes, I, I guess so. I'm not sure if uh, the initial plan included PG dump and PG restore, but um, yes. Uh, okay, you have another question there. Because I have a question as well related to his question. So if you don't re-index something that is a primary key, for instance, mm -hmm. and you said that you would go to then to the wrong place, so could it be that you wouldn't find something that is a primary key and then you will lose data if you don't re-index? Yes. 
Okay, so it's data corruption if you don't re-index, basically. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. okay, thanks. Last question, I promise. Hi, thanks for the presentation. I have a question in failover part. Mm -hmm. Like before doing failover, will there be any validation you will do? Validation? Uh, to initiate the failover process. Um, no, actually it was a pretty straightforward because uh, our control plane already uh, deals with uh, having high availability for the clusters. So uh, we didn't have a uh, validation for that part actually because uh, it is what the control plane of the Asia Cosmos DB does uh, already. Um, yes, if the uh, uh, state of our clusters were in uh, running states, uh, then we would be okay because the uh, background checks were already done and uh, we didn't see any error regarding that. Okay, thank you everybody and thank you Sana. Thank you.